Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. Here's the legal stuff. So, I sense spring is here. I'm going to go ahead and declare it here. It has arrived. I saw a butterfly yesterday. It almost knocked me over. Uh, wasn't expecting to see a butterfly on March 8th when it was barely, it probably wouldn't even 60 degrees. But right here at church, I saw a real butterfly and he was desperately trying to get warm and didn't like me bothering him. Uh, but he was sitting there in the sun. Today, he's gonna be happier with how things are because uh, I think it's supposed to get up to 70. So anyhow, uh, also heartened by yesterday's news that uh, they have that we had the first day since the pandemic began where the vax or excuse me where the virus the growth of this virus slowed down where the spread of the virus slowed down so I took those two signs together to be a sign of new life and resurrection sent from God uh, maybe we're through the darkest part of all of this. Um, still not finished, but through the darkest part. My name is Philip Martin, and this is Morning Prayer with Epiphany Lutheran Church. Here we go. Uh, you don't need the, I don't need to write the words down to this because it's such a repetitive song, and actually the first part of it is, uh, is, uh, is echo. But um, from Micah, the Old Testament prophet Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He has showed you, O oh man, what is good and what is required of you, but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. singing it uh, with me right on time, then you can just repeat what I sang. So like this. He has shown you, he has shown you, oh man, oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. You're to do justice, you're to do justice, and to love kindness, and to love kindness, walk humbly. shown you oh man what is good and what the Lord requires of you you're to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God the Lord be with you let us pray 
Great God, you are so wonderful, and we praise you for this new life that we see around us, for the news uh, that vaccination rates are rising and that uh, there are signs of life in nature, like butterflies and insects and birds around us. Uh, thank you for the ways that you show us signs of your resurrection and your promise of new life. Um, but mostly we give you thanks for Jesus, who even in the dark days is there to remind us uh, that you are in control and that your love is victorious over all. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Happy to read our devotion this morning from 7th grader Arden Edison. So I can't wait to see Arden and Poppy, her mom, when, they, uh, when we're all able to gather again um, and uh, kind of miss one of some of the many families that I miss being able to commune with and share uh, worship with. But Arden is here this morning in the words of her devotion. She also chooses a verse from the fourth chapter of Philippians, like we had yesterday, but a little bit prior to that. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6. I'll read it one more time. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Arden says, To me, this means whenever I am anxious or in distress, I know I can talk to God and he will listen. I know this because I have faith in him, Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Um, we go to God in our anxiety and our distress. Um, sometimes we forget to. Sometimes I forget to. Sometimes I just uh, think of other, other places to, to try to take my anxiety, and uh, God is the one who wants to receive that first and foremost. Um, so thank you for Arden for reminding us that we can go to God, we should go to God in our anxiety and distress. Have you ever known someone who wasn't really listening when you talked, but thinking instead about what they wanted to say? Have you ever had a friend who really, really listened, just asking good questions, not giving cliches, just letting you spill it all out until you felt better? It makes a big difference. We have a God who really listens. What difference does this make? Uh, yes. I uh, feel like too often I am the type of person who uh, is thinking about what I want to say next when somebody's talking to me. Like I'm thinking about my response to what they just said uh, rather than just listening to them. Um, and, um, you know, Paul talks about God being a place where we can always take our anxieties and distress. And God does respond. God does have an answer for us, but... Most, mostly, God wants to be in relationship with us and just listen to us um, and let us uh, bring our worries to him. Uh, Jesus says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and take my yoke upon me, I will give you rest. Um, this part of Philippians is important for us to remember because, and he says something, Paul says something similar in 1 Thessalonians, where he says, in everything, uh, let your requests be known to God, in thanks, with thanksgiving, that in every circumstance, we can give thanks, and we should give thanks. Um, too often, we, I think we morph this in our brain to say something like, um, like we think Paul is saying, give thanks for everything, as in, even in my anxious times or the things that are giving me anxiety and worry, that I should be able to give thanks to God for those things. And that's not what Paul says uh, here and in other places. He does say, in everything, and I do think, 
some may think that we're splitting hairs, but I think there's a big difference and an important difference. I can give thanks in the midst of my anxiety for things, and it, it kind of points me out of my anxiety for a moment to say, you know, I'm really stressed about this pandemic. Um, am I supposed to give thanks to God for the pandemic? No, I don't think so. But in this pandemic, it, just that looking around and saying, what are some things I can give God thanks for? Um, makes me more grateful, um, and that will lessen my anxiety. Uh, we talk in confirmation about the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Give us today our daily bread. And how those that powerful petition really does this for us. It just says, God, give me today what I need, just not just my food, but the things I need to get through the to, to take care of my bodily existence today. Give us today our daily bread. And when I realize that God will do that, that it, it puts me in a stance of thankfulness uh, rather than anxiety and anger and despair. And so uh, good thing that Arden uh, has already kind of clued into this. Um, even as, as a seventh grader, as a middle schooler, um, days of feel, feeling filled with anxiety as I remember my own middle school times. Um, God really listens to us. So with that in mind, uh, even though there are signs of good things going on right now, um, and I don't have a whole lot of anxiety about today or tomorrow, uh, maybe you do, um, and so we can join in prayer together. <clears throat> Gracious God, thank you for giving us today before we've already received it. You've already decided to give us those things that we need, the relationships that we will need uh, to hear and see your goodness, um, the shelter, the clothing, the food, the sustenance that your children need to make it through this day. Help us receive that in, in prayer and supplication. Give thanks to you for it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words of Paul and for the thoughts of Arden. If we are feeling anxiety today, Lord, we ask that you would remove that from us. Um, focus, on a, focus us on a task or a situation that we can uh, address and solve on our own um, so that we can feel your presence with us and uh, give us patience to deal with the things that seem too overwhelming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, gracious God, we are thankful uh, about the news that we hear regarding the pandemic as it reaches a new and important point. Um, we pray that it continues to slow its spread even as variants arise around us. Uh, we give thanks for all of the hard work that uh, vaccine developers have put into this moment, uh, nurses and frontline doctors and uh, physicians and pharmacists uh, that have been working for a year now uh, to deal with those who are affected by the coronavirus. We praise you uh, for bringing us to this point. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious God, we pray for those in our midst who have any kind of special need or special, maybe dealing with uh, certain kinds of anxiety due to um, an affliction or um, some depression, uh, addiction, or anything else that they are dealing with. Uh, help them uh, turn their eyes to you, O oh Lord. We pray especially for Carol and Anne, for Megan and Jenica, uh, and for all of those uh, we know that are in the hospital or receiving special care. We pray for a quick recovery for Tom Bosserman after his hip replacement surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.